Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel A to Z Nursing Notes. I am Rupinder and today I will be talking about anti-Parkinsonian drugs. Guys, this video is in continuation with the Parkinson's disease. The link of that video I have posted in the description box. Also, I have discussed about the nursing management in Parkinson's disease and the link of that video also I have given in the description box. So let's continue with the anti-Parkinsonian drugs. What are anti-Parkinsonian drugs? These are the drugs which have therapeutic effect in Parkinson's disease. These can be used in the treatment of Parkinson's disease of various causes like degenerative, toxic, infective, neoplastic or drug induced. Talking about the action of anti-Parkinsonian drugs, uh, these drugs help to restore the natural balance between the neurotransmitters in the central nervous system that is the acetylcholine and dopamine. Now as we have talked earlier in the Parkinson's disease video, Parkinson's disease is caused because of the de uh, decrease in the amount of dopamine due to the dis destruction of nigrostatial pathways. So there is a relative imbalance between the amount of dopamine and the amount of acetylcholine because of which the Parkinsonian symptoms occur. Because the amount of dopamine has decreased, so there will be naturally a, an increase, a relative increase in the amount of acetylcholine which will result in excessive cholinergic activity. So dr these drugs are used as either anticholinergics or as dopaminergic agonists, right? Let's understand this in detail. So when we talked about the Parkinson's disease pathophysiology, so it is uh, it results because of the imbalance between dopamine and acetylcholine. So you can see that amount of dopamine is decreased as compared to the amount of acetylcholine, right? So, when we talk about the treatment or the management of Parkinson's disease, so the efforts are to restore the balance between the dopamine and acetylcholine. Now, this can be done in two ways. Either we increase the amount of dopamine artificially, like by giving medications which increase the dopamine, so that the balance between the acetylcholine and dopamine occurs. Or what we can do is, we can decrease the amount of acetylcholine in the body so that there is a balance between the acetylcholine and dopamine right so there are two types of anti-parkinsonian drugs drugs which affect the dopaminergic system and the drugs which affect the anticholinergic system so the and the drugs which affect the dopaminergic system they will increase the amount of dopamine in this body and the drugs which affect the anticholinergic system they will decrease the amount of acetylcholine in the body so coming to the drugs affecting dopaminergic system, these are dopamine precursors like uh, levodopa or peripheral decarboxylase inhibitors like carbidopa and benzerazide. Then dopaminergic agonists like bromocriptine, ropinirol or pramipexol. Monoamine oxidase B inhibitors like selegilin or catecholamine O methyl transferase inhibitors like entacapone or tol tolcapone. Also dopamine facilitators can be used like amantadine. Coming to the drugs affecting anticholinergic systems, we can give central anticholinergics like trihexyphenidyl, procyclidin or biperidin. Also antihistamines can be used like promethazine. Uh, when we talk about the treatment of Parkinson's disease, usually levodopa is the most common drug of choice which is used. Now levodopa it produces symptomatic improvement in the Parkinson's disease patients because the levodopa it is converted into dopamine in the central nervous system and it increases the amount of dopamine which is available in the central nervous system reducing the symptoms caused by the Parkinson's disease. Also carbidopa is used in addition to levodopa so that effect of levodopa is enhanced right. Now how this happens? Like when we talk about levodopa, levodopa is taken when taken orally, it enters the brain by crossing the blood brain barrier and gets converted into dopamine by the dopamine decarboxylase, leading to increase in the concentration of dopamine and improving the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Now, carbidopa it cannot uh, cross the blood brain barrier, but it is given in combination with the levodopa so that it uh, the carbidopa it prevents the breakdown of levodopa into dopamine 
outside the central nervous system so whole of the medicine it is available inside the central nervous system increasing the amount of dopamine so that we uh, more improvement can occur right talking about the adverse effects uh, in case of central nervous system involuntary movements anxiety dizziness hallucinations memory loss and psychiatric problems can occur in the eyes ear nose and throat blurred vision midriasis can occur now midriasis it is the dilation of the pupil of the eye in the gi system nausea vomiting constipation anorexia dry mouth and hepatotoxicity can occur in derma melanoma occurs hemat hemat uh, hemolytic anemia or leukopenia can occur leukopenia it is the uh, low levels of wbcs in the body and miscellaneously uh the urine and the sweat and saliva they can turn red brown in color and we have to tell to the patient that this is quite normal with this while while they are taking this medication talking about the contraindications liver dopa is contraindicated in narrow angle glaucoma because it increases the intraocular pressure and uh, also in severe cardiac diseases and prostatic enlargement talking about the pharmacokinetics levotopa is well absorbed when taken orally and it is widely distributed in the body but it enters in small concentration in the central nervous system that is why it is given in combination with carbidopa so that the breakdown of levotopa outside the central nervous system does not occur metabolism and excretion occurs by gi tract and liver and talking about the half life the half life of levotopa is 1 hour of uh, uh, talking about the interactions phenothiazines haloperidol phenytoin reserpine anticholinergics kava and pyridoxin all of these decrease the effect of levodopa monoamine oxidase inhibitors inhalation hydrocarbon anesthetics antihypertensives salicylic cocaine these all increase the side effects of levodopa coming to the nursing management we have to uh, teach the patient to change the position slowly so that it uh, like orthostatic hypotension is uh, minimized also this medication can cause dizziness or drowsiness so they have to avoid activities that require alertness until the effect is known also if they uh, want to take some over the counter medications like cold remedies or drinking alcoholic beverages so they have to contact their healthcare provider before uh, taking them also in case of liver dopa we have to avoid taking multivitamins especially vitamin b12 it interferes with the liver dopa action because it decreases the effect of liver dopa also we have to tell the patient to increase his uh, activity and increase the bulk in intake of bulk or fiber in his diet and fluid in the diet to minimize the constipation as decreased perspiration can occur so we have to tell the patient to remain indoors in an air conditioned room in case of hot weather so as to avoid overheating now because uh, the perspiration is decreased so uh, which is the only mechanism of the body to cool the body down so we have to tell the patient to stay uh, to stay in an air conditioned room also instruct the patient to rinse the mouth frequently uh, and maintain good oral hygiene also chew a sugarless gum to decrease the dry mouth in case the dryness pr uh, persists we uh, notify the healthcare pr uh, professional notify dentist if dryness interferes with the use of dentures also one uh, the patient has to notify the healthcare professional if confusion rash urinary retention or severe constipation visual changes or worsening of parkinsonian symptoms occur in this case the medicine may have to be changed or uh, reduced in amount also inform the patient that harmless darkening of the urine or sweat may occur uh, taking levodopa it Uh, this color it causes the urine and sweat to become reddish brown in color there is nothing to worry in this talking about toxicity and overdose we have to assess the patient for involuntary muscle twitching facial grimacing sporadic eye winking exaggerated protrusion of tongue and behavioral changes 
if any of these symptoms occur we have to notify the physician drug toxicity may be occurring so uh, the amount of drug has to be reduced these medications only decrease the symptoms do not they do not cure the disease as i've already discussed in the parkinson's disease video the medicines only decrease the symptoms of the disease they do not help to cure there is no cure of this disease they only help to reduce the progression of the disease also we have to tell to patient that the medicine takes 2 to 6 weeks to become effective so he has to be patient sometimes patient may be uh, worried that uh, they have they are taking the medicine since one or two weeks but the effects are not there there is no decrease in the symptoms so we have to tell the patient to be patient to remain calm because the medicine it takes time to show its effects also because it takes time to uh, be, be effective so it's uh, it it should not be stopped abruptly it has to be tapered in amount right that's all regarding the anti parkinsonian drugs i hope that you found this video useful thank you very much guys